My brothers and sisters, every time we should be reminding each other of the consciousness of our maker, the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is known as taqwa Allah in the Arabic language. Taqwa of Allah. To be able to create a barrier between us and the wrath or the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By fulfilling his commands and abstaining from the prohibitions. And every time we speak about something on a Friday that would be beneficial for us as Muslimin, and even for those who may not be Muslim, who may listen in to what we are saying, it would be of tremendous benefit for them as well. What we always would like to teach is to develop a relationship with he who made you. Develop a link with he who made you, he whom you are going to return to when you die. Your link with him is more important than any other link you may develop during this time of yours on earth. And therefore, he has instructed us to do so many things. We speak about these things on a daily basis, a weekly basis, on a regular basis. And we talk about worshipping him alone, which is of prime importance. We speak about the five daily prayers, which is of utmost importance. We speak about the charities. We speak about the pilgrimage. We speak about the fasting. These making up the pillars of Islam. We speak about truthfulness and abstaining from falsehood and deception. We speak about staying away from that which is haram, that which is forbidden in terms of things that you are to consume or relationships that you may have. We stay away from that which will displease the Almighty. But I want to spend a few moments reminding you about a great act of worship. One of those things that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, it is going to be the top four things that we will be asked about on the day of judgment before we even move. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So people don't normally consider it as a major act of worship. People don't normally consider it as a very serious issue. If I were to ask you, what is a very serious issue as Muslims that you need to be concerned about? It is correct for all of us to say, ashirku billah, association of partnership with Allah. We need to be worried about it. We need to be concerned about it. We need to protect ourselves from it. But if I were to ask you to continue, I don't think what I'm about to say will come top on your list. And this is why Allah says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And remind, for definitely the reminding benefits those who are true believers. My brothers and sisters, when you were born, the majority of us were born in a clinic or a hospital. There was a payment that had to be made in most cases. That payment came from money. That money came from someone. Someone had to earn that money. Subhanallah. Thereafter, we had to be fed. If, for example, you were born and it was paid for, the hospital expenses were paid for, the next steps were not paid for. What were the next steps? We had to thereafter be looked after. The food, whether it was the milk or the powder, or as we grew older, the nappies. Back in my time, there were no disposables. There were nappies that needed to be washed and reused. Tell them that today, they will look at you with an eye that I don't even wish to explain. But subhanallah, look at how we've progressed. It requires money. Where did the money come from? So Allah says, earning and spending is one of the most important acts of worship through which you will either get closer to your maker or distant. Remember that. Earning, people don't talk about. Spending, people don't talk about even more. Subhanallah. What that means is, when it comes to earning, some might tell you stay away from interest, stay away from usury, stay away from this and stay away from that. 
But many people are never told about spending. What you spend your money on is an act of worship that will be written against your name right up to the day of judgment on which day you shall be asked to give a record of every penny you spent. Where did you spend it and why did you spend it there? Subhanallah. Today, many people in many countries across the globe, in most countries, if not all, they fear the tax man. Subhanallah. The tax man needs to know where did you get this money from? He needs to know where did you spend it? We will make sure that our accountant is aware of what happens and we will make sure if we are accountants that our clients give us every explanation so that we can fight their case if need be or we can explain to say the least. But I promise you my brothers and sisters far more important than that is to give the record to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How did you earn it? Was it halal? We cannot just say, no, I was struggling, so I decided to have something that would not have pleased you. My brothers, my sisters, you need to be able to downgrade your lifestyle if you have not been blessed by Allah beyond a certain limit because your blessings will be in other matters besides wealth. Allah blesses us in different ways. I might have what you don't have in one aspect, but I, you will definitely have a lot of what I don't have in other aspects. The problem with us, we tend to compare. We look at one another. We look at others and we feel like Allah has not blessed us, but we forget to look at what Allah has given me that he did not give you. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us the ability to be thankful to him upon all conditions. So when you're earning to get up and to go out to work is an act of worship. To look for a job, to keep looking, never to lose hope is an act of worship. It is closeness to Allah. Allah has written how much you are going to get. Indeed, that is a fact. But Allah has given you the capacity, the physical strength. Allah has given you the power to get up and do something about it. So I cannot just sit at home and think to myself, you know what? If Allah has written for me a hundred pounds this week, it's going to come through the bulb that I'm staring at on the ceiling here and it's going to drop and I'm going to say, Allahumma laka alhamdu. That's not going to happen. Allah will tell us, I gave you the energy. I gave you the strength. I dangled the carrot. All you needed to do was to lift your hand up and get that carrot. But you did not. What you did was laziness. This is why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. Wasta'in billahi wa la ta'jaz. Work hard towards achieving that which is beneficial for you. Use your energies given by Allah. Who gave you your energy? Who gave you your eyes, your nose? Who gave you your ears, your capacity, your ability? Allah, get up and do something. Go and earn because you need to feed that body that Allah has asked you to look after. Therefore, to go out and search for a job is a powerful act of worship. Never to lose hope is a powerful act of worship. And then to try and find that which is more pleasing to Allah is also an act of worship. We may not have the ideal job. We may not have a job that we are totally satisfied with. But for as long as we know that it's the best we could do and we are trying our best to get better by the will of Allah. He is watching. He knows the challenges that we are going through. He knows that you are trying. He knows I am trying and he will bless us. Have hope in the mercy of Allah. Never lose hope because your trial alone is a sign of the closeness unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you don't try, let's go back to that hadith I mentioned moments ago. The Prophet peace be upon him says, seek the help of Allah. Ista'in billah. Wala ta'jaz. And don't give up. Don't become a person who is despondent. Don't give up. Keep on going. Keep on trying. A day will come when the doors will fling wide open. If not in this world, then in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sustenance. So to be able to earn that which is halal, to be able to get that which pleases Allah 
is an act of worship. Like I said, sometimes we may not have an ideal job, but keep looking, keep trying. While you have this job, Alhamdulillah, and you're thanking Allah, your eyes are open for other opportunities, Subhanallah. And you need to know to be able to purchase that which is pleasing to Allah is also an act of worship connected to your sustenance. So the fact that now I've earned my first hundred pounds a day, for example, just an example, my first hundred pounds a day, it does not mean I can go and do what I want. Many people, when they start earning initially, they don't realize the value of that money Unfortunately, shaitan comes to some and makes them think that they can now spend it on haram and just enjoy even if it is outside the boundaries of what Allah has ordained. So you find people spending the money and I don't want to mention the list of sins because there are so many, but they spend it on that which is haram sometimes, developing bad habits, becoming addicted to that which is detrimental to you, your family, your health, your body, and primarily your connection with Allah. But when you earn the money, my brothers, my sisters, there is only a small amount that you actually need to survive. The rest of it, Allah is just watching. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to build your hereafter? Today, mashallah, we are in this beautiful Greenwich Masjid. We are utilizing the facility. I want you to think to yourself, they are building, they are expanding. What is the value of your presence here today? It is priceless, subhanallah. What is the value of your presence here today? Could we say one pound? Actually, no, it's much more than that. How much have you paid to come here today? The answer is zero, nothing. You did not pay to come here, it's the house of Allah. But there are expenses here, there are bills to be paid here, there is an expansion that is happening here. If every one of us had to pay one pound for every salah that we made in a masjid just because we used the facility the problem of all the masajid would be over and the salaries of the imams would be such that our children not just our children would want to be imams but we would start learning the quran to become an imam subhanallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding no one has forced anyone to pay but when allah places it in your heart to give towards his house, it's a sign of acceptance. That wealth that you have spent, the one pound, every time you came into the masjid and you put it into the box, subhanallah, just as a charity on your own, just that one pound, do you know what? It will multiply. Every time people have benefited from the facility, you get a full reward. Today we have a few thousand people here. You would get thousands of rewards, subhanallah. For everyone who read salah, what a wise spending. So the point I'm raising is when you are spending, not only should you abstain from prohibitions, but try and make sure your investment for the hereafter bears the maximum fruit. Put your money where you know that it's going to give back to me in the eyes of Allah something that is huge even if I don't see a multiplication in this world although Allah will most likely give it to you starting here. So if you have money to spend remember don't just waste it. It does not mean because I have 10,000 or 100,000 or a million that I should just blow that money to the left and to the right and live such a luxurious life that distances me from Allah. Mark my words. You are allowed to have a beautiful car. You are allowed to have a lovely home. But if that is going to distance you from Allah, then you've got to draw a line. You have to draw a line. Look at those in need. Were you to help them, you would find Allah. So when we speak about wealth, my brothers, my sisters, as much as everyone wants it, we need to make sure that we earn it in a proper way. And more than that, make sure you spend it in the best possible way. I'm not encouraging you simply to stay away from spending it in the wrong. That is a prohibition already from Allah. 
But I am telling you, think and try and spend it in the best possible way. There are some people sometimes who earn, but they don't spend the wealth on their own family members. Their own family members. Your children need something. Your spouse needs something. Your parents, whoever else needs things. But subhanallah, what we do, we hold back as though if we have held back the day we die, we're going to be considered champions when we've held back because we were known to the world as multi-millionaires. Islam works the opposite way. The deen of Allah, the religion works the other way. How much have you spent actually makes you the winner, not how much you saved. Because when I save money, you know what will happen to it? It's going to be distributed amongst my heirs as soon as I close my eyes. And facts, statistics prove that the more you leave, the more likely your children will fight each other for a slice of what you've left. The less you leave, the more likely they will have love amongst each other because there was no reason to fight. That goes to show my brothers and sisters, when you have wealth, Please spend it in a good cause. Spend it, use it. Yes, you may want to save for a rainy day, indeed. But don't become miserly. This is why when Allah describes the true worshippers of His, He says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا They are those whom, when they spend, they are neither wasteful nor are they miserly, but they have a balance. They know what to do. They know this is someone in need, let me give. This is a good cause, let me spend. This is a masjid, let me give. How many of us have given to the masjid? How many of us give every week or every day? One pound or two pounds, subhanAllah, to the masjid. We use the water, we use the electricity, we use the carpets, we use the facility. We use so much, we come and we do so much, but we've never thought of putting one pound, one, 50p, start off with 10p, my brothers, my sisters. Allah will open your doors. It's not got to do with the figure, it's got to do with the intention and the heart. So this is something very important. My brothers and sisters, on the Day of Judgment, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that the son of Adam on that day will not move until he's asked about a few things. One of them is his wealth. Where did he get it? Where did you get it from? How did you get it? Did you rob? Did you steal? Did you deceive? Did you cheat? Subhanallah. May Allah protect us. May Allah grant us barakah. And secondly, where did you spend it? It doesn't mean that I've got everything, I can do what I want. No, I need to make sure that it is done in a proper way. So I invite you, my brothers and sisters, I invite you today to revisit your connection with your wealth because that will determine your connection with Allah. Do you realize that Allah is the owner of sustenance? Do you, do you realize that Allah is the one who is taking account of every penny that you have? So seek the forgiveness of Allah for where you have faltered, where we have spent our monies on that which was haram, that which was displeasing to Allah. May Allah forgive us. May Allah grant us a new beginning. May we be from among those who can reach out to brothers and sisters in need in such a way that when we are in need, Allah will automatically reach out to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us 